Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's uh, continue the discussion and now we will continue the discussion on turbo machinery. So, so far we have talked about all the cycle analysis part and now we will move to the rotating part. So, now this is one of the important components of this uh, gas turbine engine. So, let us uh, look at what we are going to talk about in turbo machinery. So, essentially uh, what we need there when you talk about this turbo machinery, these are dynamic type of fluid machines. So, these are dynamic type fluid machines. So, what is the purpose of this? Why we talk about? We will come back to this figure later on. And the purpose of this dynamic type fluid machine is that. Um, we can add either we can add or we can subtract energy. So, using the flow around those components, we can add or subtract energy from fluid stream. So, the whole idea is that while the fluid passes through this kind of machines or the components or the unit uh, through the mechanism, we actually extract the energy which allows these things to provide power to the rest of the component. And since there are rotating components, we call it the rotating machinery or turbo machinery. So, there are Primarily, there are two types of systems or the dynamic system or the turbo machinery. One is obviously the compressor, which we have been uh, talking about that because this is one of the very, very critical component which is uh, required for this gas turbine operation because this is the component where actually you get pressure rise and then the other component which is the turbine. So, I mean as you recall from our earlier discussion which we have been talking about these two components in the gas turbine engine, they are see the compressor the purpose of the compressor is that provide you the required provide the required pressure rise. Okay. So, this allows the fluid when it pass through the compressor from the intake to before entering to the combustion chamber, it pass through the compressor and compressor units actually compresses the air and then it allow you to or provides you the required pressure rise. So, that pressure rise is very, very important later on of these different components to extract more energy and end of the day the whole idea is that you can generate required amount of thrust. And the second component is the turbine. Now, the turbine actually where you extract the uh, energy out of the fluid stream. So, there is I mean two basic differences. One is uh, compressor and other is the turbine. What compressor does that it is actually if you look at the working principle I mean uh, nevertheless whatever we talk about here this is give you the global idea about how compression and turbine work, but we will go into the details and that is what we specifically uh, named this section as the turbo machinery section because we are going to talk about all these different components, their operational principle, their design, how things actually happen there, what are the issues. So, this guy actually adds energy to the fluid 
at the same time if I look at the turbine there is a basic difference what turbine does turbine actually extract out so that extract energy from the fluid. So, immediately you can see one adds energy one extract energy that means in turn one can say the compressor actually it does work on the fluid that is what it does and the on the other hand the turbine it is the reverse where fluid does work on the turbines. So, there is a huge difference between these two operation of these two components one is compressor one is the turbine. So, one can see when it adds energy that means, if you look at from the basic energy conservation principle the compressor adds energy to the fluid stream that means, it requires some external energy to be given input. So, compression actually absorbs energy and at the same time turbine extract energy out of the fluid stream. So, it now when you talk about this turbo machines this all these turbo machines in a group of these compressor turbines and all these that involves collection of blades. So, all these turbo machinery they have a collection of blades, they have diffuser and flow channel. So, these are there. Now, when it actually rotates this whole combination of this flow channel blades diffuser around and proper casing they go in the rotation and the rotation of the rotor rotation of rotor actually produces the dynamic produces dynamic effects. So, this dynamic effects what we say here either this could add energy to the fluid or it can extract out the energy from the fluid. So, if it adds energy to the system then this is the actual behavior or working principle of compressor. On the other hand if it extracts out the energy out of the system. So, this is what we call turbine or the system is called turbine. So, which means so, all these turbo machineries or the turbo machines these are collections of blades diffuser flow channels and the rotor components all these different components which are involved there and the due to the rotation of this rotor that produces these things. Now, another simple thing is that when you talk about adding of the energy or when we add energy it actually the stagnation pressure increases when you add energy to the fluid it increases the stagnation pressure while when you remove energy it actually decreases the stagnation pressure. So, now this is what you can absorb as the basic components and the basic working principle of these uh, turbo machines and there are two different types I mean in the primarily there are so one can call it a aerial type second one is the radial type. So, the schematic picture here which is actually a picture of an aerial type dynamical system. So, this is the rotor this component you can think about stator. So, this is the another view of that. So, the rotor is rotating stator is there stagnant. So, while rotor rotates this dynamic effect comes into the picture and this is where the fluids comes in and goes out. 
So, whole idea is that so most of the things which will comes in and comes out if this is your inlet and this is your outlet then from inlet to outlet the flow component pretty much remains in the axial directions or in one direction. So, this is one call it aerial type or this one can also say these are the axial type. So, which means the flow comes in pass through the rotor stator or the collection of rotor and stator and then finally, goes out. So, across this component you get your desired work to be done whether adding of energy or extraction of energy is uh, essential work done takes place here and the fluid pass through this component. So, this is called the axial type machine. Now, the second one this is another picture what one can think about it is an radial type dynamical system or radial type dynam uh, turbo machines. So, what it does that flow may so, this could be the inlet if you can see the flow comes in this way goes through this internal component here and then finally, goes out like this. So, these are my outlet. So, flow comes in axially, but goes out radially that is what these are called the radial type of system and this is another view of that when flow comes in then there is all this rotating takes place inside that and finally, goes out radially. I mean flow comes axially goes out radially. So, that is what it called the now one can take some example of radial type system one is the centrifugal compressor this is one which is actually known as an radial type compressor or radial type turbo machine or one can think about centripetal turbine. So, this is another radial type system. So, these are there are other radial type dynamical system also. Now, for this kind of radial type system the machine is or the turbo machines is based on radial motion of flow passage. Okay. So, what happens is that angular momentum or moment of momentum which is called angular momentum. So, you have angular momentum equation and that is going to be an important parameter or rather the conservation equation of the same. So, when we talk about this turbo machines all these turbo machines or the dynamical machine I mean what we have looked at so far when we actually try to analyze one of this system we talk about primarily the system which are actually I mean required some of this conservation law or basic conservation laws which includes the mass conservation, momentum conservation, energy conservation. So, these are all important conservation laws which we have so far dealt with except the one which are going to now talk about is the conservation of angular momentum. Since we are dealing with this rotating system now this becomes quite important that we should also look at the conservation of angular momentum. Now going back to our previous uh, discussion mass momentum or energy we have been dealing with for different system and the different parts of this gas turbine engine. So, we are only going to look at the conservation of angular momentum then while we move forward we will go more into the details of the same. Now, just to have that classification of the turbo machinery this particular table gives you an 
broad idea or rather detailed idea about the classification of these different kind of turbo machine systems or dynamical systems. If you start with the top, the top you see that you have it is so these items are depending on which the classification has been made. So, one which you start with the let us say casing or based on housing. So, if the casing is either it could be open or it could be enclosed. If it is open then it is a wind turbine or you can think about aircraft propeller or marine screws. So, these I hope you have seen all of these. So, these are open type and the blades are rotating whether it is a aircraft propeller or screw or wind turbine the blades are rotating and you have seen this because there is no casing. So, it is exposed to the open atmosphere or air that is why these are called open casing based these things. Now, when you go to that the same time this enclosed then it could be compressor, it could be fan, it could be blower, pump, gas turbine, steam turbine, hydraulic turbine. So, all these different kind of turbo machines they come under the enclosed category. Now, while dealing with this gas turbine engine or aircraft engine, we are dealing with fan, we are dealing with compressor, we are dealing with turbines. So, these are the components or um, of our discussion. So, these are all enclosed type. Now, depending on the casing. Second is that when you look at the working fluid. So, it could be again categorized in two different component, one is the compressible, one is the incompressible. So, let us look at if the flow is compressible. So, if the flow is compressible then air is the working fluid. So, which is used in fan, which can be used in compressor, blower, turbine, aircraft, propeller or it could be. Now, if you talk about gas turbine engine then you use gas, steam turbine engine is the steam. So, these are the working fluid or other case in incompressible range you could have water where hydraulic pumps are hydraulic turbine or marine screw. You could have liquid which uses fuel pump, oil pump, oxygen pump, hydrogen pump, turbo pumps all these uses different kind of liquid fuel. So, depending on the working fluid you have a category of that. Now, the third one how you actually transfer the energy. So, it is then whether you are absorbing power or you producing power. So, that means it is actually energy consuming device. So, I would say energy consuming and this case energy producing. So, depending on the energy transfer you can have two more categories. So, one could be ducted fan, compressor, propeller, marine screws and what happens here it increases the fluid pressure and the head. So, we have already seen that when you talk about the compressor actually compressor does the pressure rise. So, when the fluid pass through the or air pass through the compressor you get pressure rise. This is where comp as a system or component compressor actually consume energy, but it does the work on the fluid. On the other case it is the energy producing device obviously, it could be hydraulic steam wind or gas turbine. So, fluid actually does the work on the blades of the turbine or these turbo machines. So, you are able to produce the energy. So, based on the energy transfer you could have two different component. Now, fourth you can have the flow path through the rotor which we just talked about. You could have axial that means, from inlet to outlet everything goes axially. So, inlet to outlet. So, these are called axial or the outlet flow is mainly parallel to the axis of rotation. So, that means, if you have this kind of shaft sitting there and then the axis of rotation the flow goes out. So, this is what you call it axial, axial compressor, axial fan, axial turbine all these are axial flow machines or it could be the other extreme could be radial when the outlet flow is mainly perpendicular to the rotation. So, if this is rotating like this flow goes out in this direction. So, that makes it the radial centrifugal pump, centrifugal compressor, radial flow turbine or you can have in between the mixed flow. 
that means outflow is partially radial and partially axial. So, that is one kind of turbine which is known as Francis turbine. So, this anyway we are not going to talk about this with respect to the uh, gas turbine engine. We will be looking at the centrifugal compressor, axial compressor and the turbine all this. Now, lastly you can have pressure change or enthalpy change through the rotor. So, you could have reaction turbine uh, reaction machines or you could have impulsive machines. What happens in the reaction machine? Pressure or enthalpy is partially changed, it could be increased or decreased in both rotor and stator of the stage. So, this is most of the turbo machines are reaction um, kind of reaction based or other case in impulsive case pressure or enthalpy is changed only through the stator of the stage. So, the Pelton turbine, some gas or steam turbine of this kind they actually fall under this category. But whatever we will do the discussion, they will be mostly of the reaction type. So, one can see if you look at this table that one can distinguish these turbo machines in a different uh, brand of categories depending on what you talk. Now, particularly will be talking about centrifugal compressor here and I mean we will start with the. Uh, so, let us see how the governing equations of the turbo machinery then we will again come back to that. So, we said that we need to have the conservation of angular momentum. So, that is what we need to have. So, we will start with the basic Reynolds transport theorem which we have discussed earlier what it talks about d n by d t for the control mass system is del del t of eta rho d v plus control surface eta rho v dot d a. Now, n is the property. So, we will put here the angular momentum. So, this is for control mass system. This is del del t C b r cross b rho d b plus this is again r cross b rho v dot d a. So, which turns out that I can write d h by d t equals to this right hand side what we have. So, this whole thing will come here. Now, some of the external torque. So, some of the external torque. So, this let us say summation of R cross F over control volume. Then we can write down this equation as del del T of C B R cross B rho D B plus control surface R cross B rho B dot N d a equals to summation of r cross f over control volume which is summation of the torque. Okay. So, it just uh, one can write this and if you see the write down the 
So, this could be the axis and this is how the things comes in goes out. So, which says that time, so this is the time rate change of the angular momentum or momentum momentum of the system. So, this is time rate change of the moment of momentum of the system equals to the sum of the external torque which is here acting on the system. So, this time rate is this is what we say let us say left hand side this is my left hand side and sum of the external torque acting on the system is right hand side. So, this is what R H is. So, that is what we can like this. Now, if we consider a rotating axis, let us say consider a rotating device as um, let us say z axis equal to the or rather equivalent to the axis of rotation. So, we are considering that for a particular machine z axis becomes the axis of rotation. So, what we are interested is that we are trying to find out the torque around this z axis or z axis whatever you call it. So, the axis of rotation is around z axis then we want to find the torque around this z axis. Typically the flow in the turbo machinery is unsteady, but so one can think about the flow inside turbo machines. are unsteady, okay. but the variations are cycle or the variations are rather cyclic and about a mean, but variations are cyclic in nature, cyclic and about a mean. So, this kind of flow is called the steady in mean. So, which means the flow is steady in the mean. Let us uh, for a flow which is steady in mean the term del del t of this becomes 0. Now, when you considering the angular momentum conservation equation. So, considering the angular momentum conservation equation and across the control surface you write the is V r plus V theta V z or z e z and what you have r is e r r. Now, what we can have r cross b is along z which is r b theta. Now, I can write the angular momentum equation angular momentum equation I can write that as T sapt which is minus m dot in 
into plus minus r in v theta in plus m dot out plus minus r out v theta out. So, this in and out represents the inlet and outlet. Okay. So, you also assume there is no flow through the control surface. So, the minus sign in m dot in because here v dot n is negative. Now, there are plus minus signs also sitting here plus minus r in and r dot out. So, which means the r v theta depends on the sign of r cross v z, which is essentially determined by the using the right hand rule. So, we will stop here and uh, continue in the next lecture.